So here we go. All right. Good morning. My name is Amy Gamber. I am the Commercial Services Manager at the Texas Association of Realtors and welcome to our webinar, An Introduction to LEAD. This video is a recording of an encore presentation of this webinar because our first attempt was canceled due to technical difficulties. This means the webinar will not have live participation, but everything else will be the same as the original. Our presenter today is Patricia Rayburn of Valterra Realty in Austin. She is a broker who specializes in sustainability, real estate management, and project management. Patricia has managed portfolios in California, Texas, and Florida. She has also served as comptroller for the Bush Real Estate Management in Miami, Florida, where she was responsible for the financial oversight of all third-party fee-managed and REO properties, representing over 8 million square feet of office and industrial assets. She is licensed to practice real estate in California and Texas, and is also a licensed lead AP in operations and management. Patricia, thank you very much for helping us out again, and I will hand it over to you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, and, and welcome to this introductory course to LEAD. Um, a lot of people's eyes cross when they hear acronyms and they go, what is LEAD? So let's start there. Uh, LEAD stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. And this is uh, course number 31560. Oops, and I'm, there we go on uh, the turn there. Uh, so my name is Patricia Rayburn, and I am a broker and also a lead AP uh, with operations and maintenance. And I've been a lead AP since 2008. And um, you, I utilize uh, all the information and the resources that I have gained as a, a lead AP every day in, in my business. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you what the lead consulting credentialing right now. Okay, and so most people are familiar with buildings being lead certified. And so there is a distinction. Buildings are certified, professionals are accredited. And so let's dive into what the uh, different disciplines and categories are. Uh, first of all, uh, most people are familiar with BD plus C, and that stands for building design and construction. Um, every you walk into a building, you see the plaque uh, for lead rating, and it's most typically from new construction. Uh, you also have a, um, a certification that you can get called ID plus C, and that's interior design and construction. So that can be for a particular uh, suite within a building, or uh, a, a, you can do interior design for lobbies. So uh, that rating is also something that people are familiar with. O plus M, and this is what my uh, specialty and credential is in, building operations and maintenance. And once a building has obtained its uh, uh, new construction certification that only lasts for two years. So after that time, you can you are eligible to recertify the operations of your building. Now, interesting enough, uh, I don't know if uh, everybody knows this, but you do not have to have a building designed for, uh, under the LEED certification to get the operations and maintenance. I actually was involved in California with a building over 100 years old, the Ferry Building. Uh, to get its certification in operations and maintenance. So any, bug, any building can actually be certified uh, for operation and maintenance to be, you know, to its highest and best performance. Another category is neighborhood development. And that is uh, a new concept over the past few years and where you're actually going outside of individually owned parcels of land and you're developing entire neighborhoods and eco districts uh, use, utilizing uh, the concepts and categories. And then again, and the last category is the for homes. Um, okay, and so those are the different certification categories. And within each one of those categories, you can have a level of certification. So the entry level of certification is green certified. And it, that is if you get on the rating scale from 40 to 49 points, then you're going to be green certified on your property. As you perform, have a higher efficiency performance, then you can go to the silver rating, gold, and then the highest rating is platinum. So that covers the categories for building certification. 
And now let's move to professional accreditation. And so the accreditation process actually mirrors that of the particular certifications that you would be pursuing. So as uh, we'll start with, the entry level uh, certification is a green uh, associate. And that is when you're going for your green associate, that's your beginning point, and you will learn the, all the basic concepts and categories uh, of lead projects and the different participations there. Once you have that initial background and certification, then you can enhance your accreditation by adding on a specialty. And the specialty would mirror what your expectations are for utilizing that. For instance, the first category here is interior design and construction. So you will see interior designers uh, pursuing this. Then you have lead for homes, lead operations and maintenance, and then neighborhood design and building design and construction. And then after that level, there is a third tier um, of certification that you can have, and that's the lead AP fellow. And that's after uh, 10 years of continuous certification, project participation, um, volunteer work, et cetera, then you're eligible to become a lead uh, AP fellow. And so let's move to the next slide. Oops, sorry, we we're moving through there. Um, so as you're taking a look at this and trying to make a decision as to uh, if you want to pursue a specialty and um, what specialty would apply to you, we would look at, uh, for example, uh, for real estate brokers, uh, agents, and uh, managers, you would look at going for a, a green associate to begin with. And you can utilize this information in every one of your transactions, and we will get into that later on in the slide. Now, um, for example, uh, lead AP, operations and maintenance, I would highly recommend this for anyone who touches commercial real estate in property management or asset management. Uh, every member of your team doing that uh, would benefit greatly from the operations and maintenance uh, accreditation. And then also uh, other individuals or apartment managers and apartment asset managers, uh, they could use all of these resources and materials to their advantage. So as we're looking at who does this currently, this is really great information, just hot off the presses. I actually got this from uh, uh, National US Green Building Council yesterday. Exactly who currently has these certifications? I'm gonna to need to move my little window here so I can get to the numbers. Okay, so it, what you'll see here in the global numbers to your right-hand corner in the slide is currently how many lead um, professionals are there globally? And the number is 82,550. Let's take a look at the breakdown for who holds those credentials. Currently, if you look at the uh, lead APs, building design plus construction, you have almost 40,000 of those 82 are BD and C. So we're looking at uh, 48% of all professionals holding this are typically architects, engineers, and uh, contractors and developers. So that core category we're all very familiar with. And you're looking at homes here, that's a very small number, only 701 professionals. Interior design, it's uh, 29 to uh, 25, so that's only 4% of credential individuals. And then you're getting into a narrower category for neighborhood design, you have 792, which is, is 1%. Uh, now uh, we get to the category that I'm certified in, lead APO plus M. Uh, globally, we, all, we have less than 9,000. That's 3% of all professionals there. So if you really want to distinguish yourself uh, in your field and globally, when people are looking to resource somebody with th this um, accreditation and uh, expertise, then you can really make yourself stand out. Um, included in here is Lead for Homes Green Raider. Now that is, that is someone actually who, who um, goes out in two job sites and actually certifies that um, uh, they're in compliance with the rating system. Now Lead Green Associate, that is the first tier, first level of certification and you've got almost 43% participants. Ah, excuse me, 43% participation in that category. And, and 
of this 35,000, we don't know if that's the, the base level that they were obtaining or if they're going to uh, move forward and get an, a uh, specialty there. And then lead fellows, 225 uh, lead fellows globally. And I'm really excited looking forward um, this next year in 2007, I can uh, begin that process myself to join that category and I, I plan to do so. They also broke out for me yesterday. Uh, if you're looking at uh, uh, the state of Texas and where you would be placing yourself in accreditation and uh, standing out uh, above your peers, uh, this is what the numbers look like for Texas. So we have 2,095 uh, professionals in building design and construction, only 55 in homes. That, that number really amazed me. Interior design and construction, 207. Neighborhood design, 26. Operations and maintenance, 126 uh, for the state of Texas. Green Raiders, 45. And uh, Green Associates, 1589. And 11 uh, lead fellows. So those numbers are really interesting numbers for you to take into consideration. Uh, when you are uh, making a decision whether you want to pursue this credential. Oops, I'm having troubles with my mouse on this. So an interesting fact about factoid, about buildings, I've looked for the source uh, where these numbers come from. So we're, we all quote them, but I'm not exactly sure the source. So if you will take into consideration all the building existing buildings uh, today, uh, or 90 eight percent of all buildings that you look at at any given point there's only two percent of uh, buildings uh, in our inventory that are new construction so i'd like to go back to the the previous slide after taking this into consideration when you look at professional development and who has the credential you're looking at 48 percent well and you add together uh, construction and homes you're looking at the majority of the credential professionals in the new construction um, subcategory. And the professionals that are touching all the existing buildings are actually a minority. So I would like to see these numbers actually reversed uh, because we can use all this information in our daily transactions. Where do we get this? Um, this uh, information if you decide to move forward. There's, there's several sources that you can go to. Uh, one of the first sources that I would recommend is going to the U.S. Green Building Council website itself. Uh, you can uh, sign on and get an account for free and then you can peruse all the, the different educational resources they have and they can point you to different vendors, etc. Uh, you can either self-study or go through uh, a, a course. One of the premier uh, websites that you can go to is Green Building Educational Services, and this is the, the link to the website. Everblue is also uh, very well known in the, the educational category. You can also look at your local universities and community colleges. They can offer courses there. Uh, consultants will customize courses for you and come, come teach at your workplace or uh, if the Board of Realtors wants to put a, a course on, et cetera, you can go there. You can also self-study. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, self-study groups that people can resource, and uh, typically what that looks like is people will meet uh, one time a week for six weeks and study each one of the uh, uh, categories and prepare themselves to take the exam. And then also you have local chapters of the U.S. Green Building Council that uh, also have educational opportunities and, and put together study groups uh, for their membership. So th these are some excellent resources for you to go look at and find out the different pricing. The pricing on these classes is, is uh, constantly changing. You can do um, uh, an online course, you can do a, an in-person class, they have two uh, day seminars. It's, it's just uh, resources to go look at. Okay, and I'm having problems getting my mouse through here. <laughs> and uh, my, I don't know why, but my uh, arrow keys aren't working. Okay, so once you've gotten through the steps of determining what credential you want, how you're gonna study for it, and you're ready to take your exam, 
this is the, here is the fee schedule for how the, uh, you take the exam. So if you're um, going for your lead green associate, you would sign up to take the exam from the USGBC uh, website. And for your green associate, the fee would be $200. Uh, if you're a member, $250 for non-members. The uh, price for the full exam, meaning if you were taking both the AP and the green associate at the same time, would be 400 if you were just, if you sat first for your green associate and then sat secondly for the specialty, then it would be 250 um, I'm going through that because um, in the, it wasn't until 2009 that you could break up the classes. When I first took it, it was a four hour exam, not a two hour exam, and all the materials were included at once. So let's look under the column for your green associate. Are there eligibility requirements? None. You can self-study. You don't have to take the class and have uh, evidence of completion, or you can take courses and go do that. Each test is 100 multiple choice questions uh, per section, and you have two hours to, to take the exam. And then a passing score is 170 uh, on the scale of 125 to 200. So. That and this is just right off the U.S. Uh, Green Building Council website and their fee structure. That this also changes uh, right now. There, I understand there's a, a promotion for students, and the fee is only one hundred dollars for full-time students that want to take uh, the lead green associate. So that's the basics on um, how to study for the exam and how you would take it. And now we're going to move into the section just some of the basic concepts uh, about LEAD and the types of information that you'll learn uh, during your studies for the green, LEAD Green Associate. Now, and at the LEAN Green Associate, uh, LEAD Green, <laughs> almost sounds like LEAN, LEAD Green Associate level, uh, you get a very good understanding and overview of all the categories. And then once you move to the AP uh, level and credentialing, it will be a deep dive into the concepts. So let's just talk about some, what some of the core concepts uh, that you'll be learning about. Number one, it would be the impacts of U.S. buildings on resources. So U.S. buildings uh, consume uh, primarily 40% um, of all energy use, 72% of electrical consumption, 39% uh, represents 39% of our CO2 emissions, and uh, consumes 13.6% of our potable water. So those are interesting breakdowns of consumptions for our uh, buildings. Now, what, what kind of useful impacts can we make by uh, learning about the sustainability principles and best practices and um, uh, applying them to the properties that we touch? And this is in any manner that we touch it, whether we're um, negotiating a lease uh, in an office building, whether you're uh, assisting your client with a site location for commercial property or development, or you're actually managing the properties themselves and having an impact in that manner. So you have the opportunities uh, to reduce energy use anywhere from 24 to 50%, CO2 emissions uh, reduction of 33 to 39%, water use 40%, and in, and in my experience, in many cases, more than that, and solid waste 70%. Um, this is this is a real key area that we can have uh, fantastic and substantial impacts uh, on our environment. Okay, and so what, what do uh, green building uh, principles address? You'll be addressing uh, through uh, the materials climate change, what we do in resource depletion in the building and operations of buildings, uh, how we impact water consumption, the degradation of our ecosystem and habitats uh, for our sites, Oops, sorry about that. And indoor environmental air quality. And also we have impacts on occupant comfort and productivity. So this is one of uh, the concepts that you'll hear a lot about during the uh, educational materials is our triple bottom line uh, that we are able to, by uh, impacting our properties, uh, provide for economic prosperity. If you're using less, then you're spending less money. Uh, the social responsibility of uh, doing the right thing when we manage our properties uh, and then also the environmental stewardship that is our obligation while we're here. 
Okay, so how do we utilize this green building expertise and who do we bring together uh, on our teams? Well, that's really interesting and it changes um, for each project that you have and what you're doing in the life cycle of that project. So this is kind of like the wheel of fortune for me where you're looking at who, who are the people that we pull into our team. Um, so if you're building a building, you're gonna pull the different, you're gonna weigh heavily on your architects, your energy modeling, your structural engineers, MVPs, builders, et cetera, uh, your civil engineers. But if you're uh, retrofitting uh, or dealing with a HVAC issue, you're gonna be heavy on the facilities maintenance, o and people, uh, in, let's see, the um, uh, civil, uh, excuse me, your electrical engineers and mechanical engineers on that. So this is, you'll look at this and uh, decide who is appropriate to bring on your team, depending on what your project is. And each one of the disciplines that you'll be selecting from, whether it be the green associate or the operations and maintenance or neighborhood design, you will have all of these seven categories that you'll be um, touching uh, in those uh, credentialing. So sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental air quality, innovation and design, and regional priority. And not in, these are not standalone um, categories because when you uh, make a decision in a regional priority category, it may affect your energy and atmosphere or our materials and resources. So there are synergies between each one of these that give you a greater benefit, okay? And so let's just take a, a, a deeper dive into some of the, the materials uh, that you will be uh, learning and about in each one of these disciplines. So sustainable sites. Some of this is pretty self-explanatory. So you're looking at how much, uh, what type of landscaping that you're putting in. If you have landscaping that is low water uh, and then also low maintenance, uh, then that's gonna improve your property. Uh, here's some of the uh, concepts about sustainable sites. Um, and all this information comes into play depending upon your uh, different discipline. So if you represent a client, you're brokering a deal and you want to know more about how do I place my client and what are the resources I need to know about uh, uh, my sustainable sites to achieve their ultimate goals in their development, you can really assist in that process. So location, of course, we all know this, location, location, but what are the infrastructures available to them? What is the access to public transportation? And also, act, you know, what are the active sites there? You'll be learning all that uh, information in your studies. Some other uh, concepts about sustainable sites are open spaces within your site, how do you deal with the stormwater coming off your site in your development? A brownfield restoration is a building if your client's looking to uh, restore a building uh, that has some um, environmental issues. What, what, how do you do that? What are your resources and how do you move them through that project? Uh, heat island effect for your sites. You'll learn about light pollution as well in lighting. And you'll also learn about alternative transportation to facilities. On the uh, water efficiency category, let's dive into that as well. This looks, uh, if you'll notice this, this looks very similar to our city hall at Austin. Okay, and some of the uh, intents and information you'll be learning about is how to reduce water consumption, how to reuse water when appropriate, safe and legal. And then also, of course, uh, everyone's familiar with indoor water use how are you managing the wastewater, and how can you effectively uh, manage your landscaping and reduce water consumption there. As you move into energy and atmosphere, some of the items you'll be uh, learning about will be how to reduce, reduce your energy loot. <laughs> Sorry about that. Reduce your energy use, and then also encourage renewable energy supplies uh, for your properties. Some of the items that you'll be learning in this category are how to reduce demand reduction, um, how to uh, be more energy efficient, what is commissioning and how do you do that in ongoing commissioning, and how do you best monitor and verify your systems. One of the sayings here 
uh, that you hear throughout uh, the educational courses is you cannot manage what you do not measure. So measuring and commissioning is very important. So another one of the concepts that you'll be uh, reviewing uh, with energy and atmosphere is how to generate on-site energy and also purchase green power. How do you make that happen? Under the category materials and resources, um, you'll, spend a, you'll spend a good amount of time here uh, learning about how to reduce the amount of materials needed, how to use materials with less environmental impact, where to purchase those materials, and how to reduce and manage waste. So um, under the uh, use of materials, uh, there's an, uh, a policy called environmentally preferred uh, uh, procurement, um, <laughs> EPP, on your materials. So if you purchase less, you purchase the right materials, you're able to dispose of them and reduce your waste significantly. And then uh, you'll also uh, go through and learn the concepts of life cycle for your resources and management and life cycle assessment. So you actually look at each detail and spend time planning on what you're going to purchase based upon uh, what you need. And this is the construction model. What is the concept? What is the design? What raw materials are we going to have to uh, extract? There, you take into consideration the transportation of those materials how the materials are manufactured, uh, of course, and re uh, transported during the life cycle, and then after your use, how do you dispose of it? So this is a, a, a cat really interesting category. Then uh, indoor environmental air quality. We spend a lot of time on this because it's important for your occupant comfort. You'll learn how to provide systems to ensure uh, a quality of indoor uh, environmental quality. And you'll also learn how to eliminate and reduce uh, management of, of contaminants in this category. And it looks, this looks very different depending on what uh, uh, accreditation you're going for. So someone who's uh, studying design and construction is going to be looking at this from a different angle than someone that uh, manages the property or uh, an interior designer. So the curriculum is geared toward how each one of the uh, professionals will be using it. Indoor air quality, you'll be learning uh, conceptually uh, how the ventilation uh, works, thermal comfort, and all about day lighting and day views. Other uh, indoor environmental quality concepts you'll be uh, moving through is general construction in adhesives, flooring adhesives, fire stopping sealants, caulking, duct sealants, and pl uh, plumbing inhalants. So you, you learn about the impact of all these products on uh, your indoor air quality and what to do with that. Innovation in design and operations. So this is a relatively new category and it encourages um, uh, team members and to uh, think outside of the box, come up with a different concept and design on uh, how you can apply um, all these best practices to your specific um, uh, project. Let's, let's pull out an example of that. Um, I was consulting with Dallas Community College District a couple of years ago, and they wanted to uh, pursue operation maintenance certification for one of their uh, buildings. And they said, well, what can we do uh, to encourage student uh, participation and also give each classroom the information they need to utilize their blinds, their lighting, the HVAC. So they, they came up with an innovative uh, method of putting a um, scorecard, an environmental scorecard, at the uh, entrance of each room by the light switches that told each one of the occupants using it how to use that, that particular room or suite. And uh, it was very creative that they used um, a scorecard for that. And then uh, here we go through the intent for innovation and design is to recognize exemplary or exceptional green buildings and also to reward practices uh, that the LEED rating system does not specifically address. Um, another example would be uh, most buildings don't have problems with seagulls in them, but the ferry building in downtown San Francisco uh, had an ongoing issue with seagulls 
not only harassing restaurants, but also getting into the building during the coldest part of the winters. So they, we applied for a innovation and design um, uh, credit on the basis of how we manage the seagulls without harming them or, um, or negatively impacting uh, our environment. So you can also, you can always have something unique to your project or your property that uh, is innovative. So um, in here, in this category, you, to be innovative, to be considered innovative, it will have to substantially exceed current lead requirements. It also needs to address issues that are not covered by lead. So it would be something that's unique to your situation. And also demonstrate comprehensive approaches and quantifiable benefits. Okay, and that, so that covers each one of the lead categories that uh, you will be learning about for each one of the disciplines or accreditations and um, how to go out and find those educational courses and take your exam. So uh, this concludes our presentation for today. And since we are pre-recorded, uh, we are not going to do the Q&A. That's my understanding at the end here. So if you have any questions or would like to learn more about uh, LEAD accreditation and how you could pursue that credential, please feel free to contact me. Um, I'm here in Austin, Texas on 3114 South Congress. You can uh, call me at my office on my mobile or email me. And uh, I just gave you a little quick screenshot about Valterra Realty. Uh, this is how I use my accreditation, my brokerage. Um, I want all my clients to know that uh, it's our goal at Valterra Realty to maximize the economic value of every real estate asset while being excellent stewards to our environment and the communities where we live, work, and play. So that's an example of how I, uh, we truly believe that the economic, that each property can, or each project can be economic and environmentally sustainable. So that concludes uh, my presentation for today. Okay, this is Amy again. Thank you, Patricia, so much. That's really interesting. Um, I wish you could have seen me nodding while you were talking. Uh, so we really appreciate you presenting this to us, Patricia. As everybody can see, this is an enormous topic, and I'm really hoping that we'll have a chance to do some more education on this next year. And I'm really hoping that anybody who views this video will feel free to get in touch with me at TAR and tell me which specific areas are of the most interest to you if we'd like to pursue some more webinars and further education on this. So um, thank you for tuning in, everybody. This was our last webinar in our 2016 series. We will be back up and running with new webinars in March of 2017. And I'm currently working on the schedule for next year. So again, if you guys have topics you'd like to hear about, please let me know. I'm going to give you my email address which is agamber at texasrealtors.com. That's A-G-A-M-B-E-R. Uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate to contact me. As you can see, Patricia's email address is right here on the screen. Um, I will be uploading this video uh, to our commercial webinars webpage so that anybody can see it who would like to. Um, so again, we will wrap up. Patricia, thank you very much. Thank you. And we will see everybody soon. I hope everybody has a great holiday. Take care. <laughs>